I'm fixing the TV set. There's a space flight tomorrow morning, and I want to watch the blast off. You're making more noise fixing the TV than they will be blasting off. <laughs> You've got sensitive ears like that. You'd never make a good astronautist. Astronautus? A lady astronaut. Oh, how about astronaut? Oh, now that is cute. That's what our space program needs. To be a little cuter. Maybe our space program needs a few women. <laughs> I doubt that. Oh, what makes you so sure? Oh, boy, because space is a man's game, Katie. That's what they said about voting. That's true. Yeah. You'd have thought we'd have learned from our experience, wouldn't you? Very funny. <laughs> Good night, man. Good night, Katie. country's first astronaut. It's a great honor to be selected, but it would be a greater honor to actually participate. You feel you're being discriminated against? Well, I wouldn't say that, but I am the only one they make wear a safety belt at lunch. <laughs> probably all wondering why I've called you together. As your flight director, I am proud to announce that our next space flight is finally locked in. For sure? A probable maybe. <laughs> now, this is our last flight before we go to the moon. I hardly need to tell you how vital that is. Three of you will make the flight. Which three? As you know, we are scrupulously fair. To the men. <laughs> we have arranged a series of tests to pick those most likely to succeed. <laughs> I want to remind you that this project is essential to the welfare and prestige of our country. So therefore, we should not use our best people. So therefore, we should use our best men <laughs> to ensure that we get to the moon before... <laughs> our nearest competitor. <laughs> Remember, they are second. They may be trying a little harder. <laughs> uh, seems to be no question about it. It's going to be Blake, Hoffman, and Johns. Well, but what about... I reckon you didn't hear me. I said it looks like Blake, Hoffman, and Johns. But, sir, what about Morley? Norton, we don't only fire rockets in the space program. Sometimes we fire people, too. <laughs> Looks like Blake, Hoffman, and John's to me. That's what I like to see, Norton. Teamwork. <laughs> Come in. I wondered if any decision has been made as to who's going on the flight, sir. Yes. Blake, Hoffman, John's. Even though Morley's at the head of the list? Astronaut Morley 
<laughs> Must I remind you over and over again that you are here merely as a, a political courtesy, as a sop to the women voters of the country? <laughs> Spade is a man's game. Then may I suggest, sir, that you go fly a kite? <laughs> And a very good figure. Yeah. Too bad she's a woman. <laughs> yes, yes. Mumps. All three. Blake, Hoffman, and John. <laughs> but we've already started the countdown. The blast off is tomorrow morning. Well, I'll just have to... I'll have to use Goldberg, Johnson, and Moyers, that's all. You don't mean mumps. <laughs> well, I'll just have to scrub the launch. Thanks, Doctor. I'm sure you did your best to save them. <laughs> oh, sir. Norton, bad news. We're gonna have to scrub the launch. The space shot is off. All our men have the mumps. Off? Why, sir, it can't be off. And why not? Well, sir, the news just came in. Uh, our uh, nearest competitor is sending up a rocket tomorrow morning, too. If we don't send ours up, they'll be ahead of us. Do you know what that means, sir? It means that the amber waves of grain ain't gonna grow on the moon. No more Purple Mountain's majesty. No fruited plain. Norton, we can't let this happen. It's got to be an American that's the first man on the moon. Even if it's a woman. <laughs> concerns me is we have no backup pilot, nor do we even have a, a backup backup pilot. That's not what concerns me. Can you handle all three jobs? Of course I can. Let's not waste time discussing minor points. I always said you had a lot of moxie. The real problem is that I have not had my hair done. Well, I think it looks just lovely. Besides, who's gonna see it up there? Those are just the times when you meet someone. Yes, and that, Morley, I know that neatness counts, but... If I'm going to represent my country, I must look my best. If I cannot look my best, I cannot do my best. Well, well, uh, go ahead, get it done. Instantly, that's an order. That's not easy. I have a very temperamental hairdresser. He does not make appointments less than two months in advance. You can try. For me. For your country. <laughs> La, da, 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 da. Penny from heaven. You shouldn't bite your nails, sir. It makes them hard to do. I'm sorry. It's my job. You bite your nails for a living? No, no, no. Couldn't you do all that a little faster? It may not seem like it to you, but I'm working at an inhumanly fast pace. I see. Well, we blast off in a matter of hours. What do you suggest? Hold the countdown. <laughs> hmm? But tests have shown that they're not necessary for women. Oh, yes, sir. It's just murder on the hair. About enough of that. Let's run down this list of portable equipment. All right, sir. Transistorized resuscitator. Check. Lip gloss. Check. And pack communicator. Check. Eyeliner. Check. Power charge, amp meter, current. Lip gloss, eyeliner. Check, check, check. All set, sir. Well, I guess that just about covers everything. Anyone for blast off? <laughs> Ten, nine, eight, seven. Hold it. Hold the countdown. Holding on seven. Well, what's the matter? We're getting a message from the rocket.
forgot a clean hanky. For you, sir. Hmm? Oh. Hello? Lavender 6 to Pluto Control. Pluto Control. What is it, Lavender 6? I see another rocket, and it's going in the same direction. It's gaining on me. Do we have another rocket up there? <laughs> yes, sir. It's our nearest competitor. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir, and we just got an intelligence report. Oh, this isn't their last shot before they go to the moon. It isn't. No, sir, you see, we kind of... Made a little mistake, you see. They're going to the moon, all right. But today... Are you sure? Oh, absolutely, sir. We just talked to their control, and they gave us the horse lab. And they know our rocket isn't equipped for anything but a training flight. Couldn't possibly get to the moon. <laughs> Lavender 6, did you hear all that? Yeah. I have only one thing further to add. The first man on the moon must be an American lady. Now, that other rocket is on its way to the moon. And only you, Katie Morley, can stop them. Right, sir. <laughs> I worked for two years in New York. Oh, doing what? Spy. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, freezing out here. Do you mind if I come in? Well, uh, we are on our way to the moon. To the moon? Oh, how lucky for me. That's just... 
house is where I'm going. You were going through the moon? Yeah, but my rocket broke down. <laughs> well, you look just like ours. Same plan. We stole them. Uh, my name is Katie Morley. This is Theodore. He does not speak English. Oh, I'm delighted to I am Boris. I'm also very delighted to meet you. And we are delighted, but that is a problem. The first one on the moon must be a Russian. I do not see how we can thank you. Well, you're not going to leave me here, Boris? Why not? Well, it would not be very chivalrous. It would not be polite. I thought the men from your country were more kind and more considerate and more romantic. We are. Even in America, when a lady gets stranded on the road, a gentleman always stops to help her. He does? Oh, yeah, and when she has a flat tire, many men stop. They fight for the privilege of changing it. That is so. Oh, we yeah. are. But if you want me to stay here all alone in a broken rock... <laughs> do you, Paul? <laughs> There's a message coming through, sir. Yes? You can't beat them. Join them. More champagne? Why not? <laughs> More caviar? Why not? <laughs> It's remarkable how you can do all this. Oh, it's really nothing. I just happen to have some concentrated caviar and some champagne in my purse. To you. And to you. And to the door. And to the equality of the sexes. Ah, the sexes. I drink to that. <laughs> ah, cigar? Ah. Cigarette? You are such a gracious hostess. Chewing gum. <laughs> I learned that from the airlines in America. Is like this on all flights? Oh, yeah. You never need the passengers alone. <laughs> Newspapers, magazines, playing cards. I could not read. Well, then, how about some more champagne? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am so sorry. We can't see a movie. It's not a projector. It's a special camera to take picture of first one on the moon. Oh. You really think that we are more of a gentleman than any other man you have met? Oh, I'm sure you will never disappoint me. Never. Take my shit. Oh, no. I insist. No, no, I couldn't. What do you think this is? Your subway? <laughs> 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 they should be landing any minute. Yeah, it's all coming to a head, isn't it, sir? It's where we separate the men from the, the girls. man on the moon must be me. Yes, yes. I didn't oh, know. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please, we're landing on the moon. Go 
back to sleep. It's all right. What time is it? It's very early. You want to watch the space shot? Okay. About ready to go. We've count down to 15, 14, and before long, we should be seeing the launch. Eight, seven, uh-oh, there's a hold on seven. Seven and holding. It's one of the astronauts who called it. Seven and holding. Oh, darn it. Now, what is that? I know. <laughs> what do you mean, you know? How could you possibly know? I just know, that's all. <laughs> all right. Why is it on a hold? One of the astronauts forgot something. Just what did he forget? A clean hanky. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. I suppose that was the sneeze. See, you're learning all the time. <laughs>